The Psychology of Painting. Hello everyone, welcome, welcome to Signpost for Living with Dr. Kirsten Hunter and I am incredibly excited by today because we are just going to have fun because it's my favourite topic which is painting and we are here with gorgeous Catherine Cadden. Hello. Hello, hello Kirsty, and hello everyone. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Now as everyone might know from everywhere I put out all sorts of social media, everything, I love painting mm-hmm. And yes. you, my darling, are my painting teacher. Yes. <laughs> you are my mentor and my inspiration. And so the psychology of painting, I thought, who better than Catherine Ketton? And okay. she's, she's here, everybody. Yes, yes, I'm here and, and happy, very happy to talk about the psychology of painting. We're about to dive yes. deep, aren't yes, we? Yes, we are. Yeah. It's very cool. Okay, so first of all, painting. When did this come into your world? How did this come into your world? Well, I suppose I could say it came into my world when I was born and the, and the first time, you know, <laughs> you pick up something to make a mark with. But uh, that's not in... It, 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 whilst that's true, I didn't start my recent journey until um, my early 50s. Really? All right, yes. Yeah. So I've been painting about 20 years. Yeah. And uh, wh- what happened initially was a friend of mine said, look, we're going to have watercolour classes on my front veranda once a month on Sunday. Do you want to come? And I thought, oh, that sounds a really lovely social thing to do. I'll be in that. And so I went along and it was only sort of 10 minutes, 20 minutes into the class when I stopped talking to everybody else. It wasn't a social thing at all. I was just smitten. (laughs) <laughs> and, you know, there I was drawing a pot of geraniums on her front veranda. Um, what, when you say smitten, what do you mean? What happened I mean, for you? I, I, um, it was just, it, this feels right for me. And I want to get this, I want to make this look good. I, I, I don't care about conversations with other people, which I thought I would. I thought it was going to be a social thing. And it wasn't. Um, so it, it was... Uh, Yes, just me wanting to be absorbed in this, getting, when I say getting it right, uh, I don't want to imply that there was a heap of anxiety of, you know, I might do this wrong or whatever. Mm. It just felt I was doing it right, if you like. And uh, I got, a you know, an awful lot of pleasure. So that was my first reintroduction, if you like, to painting. But, you know, I've always been somebody who's gone to art galleries I've mm. always been someone who's been involved in, in, in craft type things with a with a, a, an artistic element, you know, mosaics and embroidery and sewing and all those kinds of things. So I've I've done lots of things through my life, but when I started, um, well, first the watercolor and then more watercolor and then some acrylic and then oil painting, you know, it, it grew. I just felt oh, this is what I've been looking for. Had you been looking? Uh, well, I, I thought, you know, I'd been doing the mosaics and doing the sewing and all that sort of thing, but suddenly it you, felt... You hadn't quite landed. I hadn't landed. That's yeah. a good way of putting it. And suddenly I felt, ah, oh, yes, this is what I've been looking for and now, now I've found it. So, <laughs> so <laughs> that's great. part of being smitten, I think. Can you, can falling you explain in love? Yes. falling in love? When I paint... As, as John would tell you, he's probably going to smile in a minute, but um, he says, I'll see you later. Yes. I'll see yes, you later. You're yes, gone. You're yes, gone. That's You're right. gone. Yes. And tomorrow, I'll see you tomorrow. Because I just absolutely go into this, like, yes. this, this, I just dive in and I'm gone and I disappear. Time disappears. And I'm just so profoundly content. Yes. Yes. Now, I'm not, whilst I, I do experience that, and certainly initially, that's my description of being smitten a bit, really, that was the case. Um, I'm now more than that, if you like. It's more than just <laughs> flow. I, I, I'm not. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just sheer pleasure. Where, what do you mean? Where are you now? Um, uh, my pleasure comes from getting it right, and sometimes getting it right means getting it wrong a few times. And so I'm, I'm probably... Um, uh, really refining the skill. Yes, refining the skill. 
one of the things that I have realised why I love painting is because uh, I love learning. I'm, I'm the sort of person who loves it. I always, you know, when I was a drama teacher, uh, I was, so I was a drama teacher before I, you know, changed careers and so on. Um, uh, you know, I went to as much uh, professional development as I could. When I was a counsellor, I went to lots and lots of, I just love learning. Mm. Now in art, there is so much to learn. Mm. Uh, and once you have learned one technique, um, there's you know lots more to go. Well, you're forever the student of art. Mm. Mm. There's a saying: um, uh, life is short, but art is long. <laughs> so there is there's always somewhere else to go. Yeah. Um, so you know, after you have uh, developed the skills of painting still life. You can develop skills of painting landscape or portraiture or abstract or, you know, and it goes on and on. And so there's always more to learn. And so that's been one of the great attractions for me, to be able to see myself learning and see that what I'm doing now is better than what I did even a year ago. Mm. Uh, And certainly a lot better than I was doing 10 years ago Mm. or 20 years ago. Just refining the skills. So there's a lot of satisfaction comes from that. And I suppose a bit to do with, okay, I'm getting older, I'm in my 70s, but gosh, I'm still learning and I'm still getting better, if you like. (laughs) You do not look like you're in your 70s. Well, I am, I sure Well, I'm just saying. (laughs) Yeah. So that that's a lot of the attraction for me. So whilst, yes, I identify with that being in the flow and certainly, yes, time doesn't matter and, and those sorts of things. You know, I, I am, uh, I'm, I always stand at my easel and I'm always moving back and forth from the easel to, to look at what I'm doing and then go back and forth and uh, mix paint and so on. And I'm in that rhythm of doing that Um but it, but it does involve not just absorption, it does involve a critical faculty as well, but it's somehow it's a positive critical faculty. It's not... Well, it's expansion. Yes, it? yes, it is, it is. It's gross. And, and it's bliss when you get, you know, the right colour and the right brush stroke yeah. and all of those things coming together, you know, and you can... Yes, it's bliss. <laughs> Do you wish that you had discovered painting earlier? Well, that's an interesting question because, so initially uh, when I left school, I was going to choose between, you know, being a drama teacher or being an art teacher. So I did art at school. Uh, Drama won out, okay. So at school you were quite, when I was at school, I couldn't, okay, this sounds a bit wanky, I'm very sorry, but I couldn't understand how everyone couldn't just draw. Right. Right. I could always just draw. Yes, and I could okay. always put it together, and, mm. and I always was, a, mm. and I, I, it was just so natural. Yes, and yeah. I just couldn't understand that people couldn't. That does sound wanky, doesn't it? No, <laughs> I'll forgive you. <laughs> okay, I get it. Yes, I get so it. So you were you were yes. a natural at school as well. Uh, yeah, I could draw. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting that when I was doing the watercolor on the front veranda, and the watercolor teachers looked at mine and she said, "Oh, you can draw," and I thought, "Oh." Yes, I can. <laughs> I was reminded. I forgot. I, yes, I forgot. forgot. It was a bit like that. Yeah. It was a bit yeah. like I forgot, and yes, I can. So I was going to decide whether, you know, uh, to do art teaching or drama. Drama won out. And, uh, and I certainly enjoyed the creative process of teaching drama. And it was uh, probably when I shifted careers um, in my 50s or, or late 40s, um, and went into psychological counselling, family therapy and so on, that um, when I left the drama teaching, there was a a gap, there was something missing and that coincided with the invitation to go and paint watercolours and so it fit nicely together. Don't you think that in the the counselling world, the psychology world, there's a huge amount of creativity? Oh, yes, there is, there is. Now, different. It's different. Not for your yes. satisfaction. Yes, 
it 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 is and you're really thinking on your feet oh yes um and you know which is a, a bit like the creative process you have to be able to think creatively on your feet um and and certainly that that's there um in counseling but there was something else but, and as well as the creative thing i needed something at the end of the day sometimes and you would know you hear some sad stories in counseling you um you are uh, with people it's a privilege to be with people um at difficult times in their lives mm. um and it is easy to absorb a lot of that and you know you should leave it alone when you go home you should close the office door and leave it alone good old boundaries mm, good old boundaries indeed <laughs> but uh certainly i found that painting helped me leave it alone mm. because when you're painting you're not thinking about whether or not you know something else could have been done or um you know uh how that client is right now or whatever and it's important that you are able to do that really to go back into the into the counseling room and be available to your client so mm. i found that it was a good foil it's like a recharge for, what I was for you doing. it was yes but but it's more than that now yeah it's not just a what foil. It, what is it now for you what is it now um Oh, it's it's very important. You have these annoying students like me that come along. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, the student thing is interesting because it was a long time. I was painting for quite a long time before I decided, you know, I I could do a bit of teaching now. Yeah, given that your background is teaching. Given my background is teaching, exactly. Mm. Uh, but I I I suppose to start with, I hadn't wanted to spoil painting. By teaching, now that sounds an odd thing to say, perhaps. But going back to your question of did I, did I wish I'd started painting earlier? Mm. And my answer about you know thinking about being a drama teacher or an art teacher, if I had been an art teacher, would I have got the joy out of painting myself? If I had you know spent twenty years in the classroom. Mm. Um, you know, and and having to order paints and and get on on kids' cases about tidying up and I don't know. It's don't a good know. point. It's a yes. good point. When it becomes your work, can it truly yes. be your downtime? Yeah. So I I was a bit tentative about the teaching to start with. I I, I felt that I didn't want to spoil what mm. I did, but in fact that that hasn't happened at all. Uh, I feel that in fact having to articulate what i do mm. is helpful for me and we yes. met we met didn't we in a, in a, like a group a group class yes. yes which was oil painting 101 yes or yes. maybe 102 <laughs> i just missed the first class there was a lot of people that knew it was, stuff it was a it was beginner stuff yes yeah yes. and um and then i um i approached you and said hey how about i come and we just do some individual lessons yeah yeah and uh that's how we went from there yes yes it must be nice uh to do the individual lessons is it because you can just tap into the individual or uh look i don't mind doing uh i do also you know i have a, a regular weekly class um and i have about 10 students 10 10 to 15 students and i enjoy that they're all at different levels different uh, abilities but um i have to do a lot more preparation for that because they've all got to be doing the same thing if you like mm. with an individual you can uh, find out what they want to do o on the spot yes. if you like yes you know what shall we do today or um not that you, you could rely on that entirely you, you you do have to have some ideas yourself obviously but um it's a different sort of teaching i wouldn't say that it's better or worse sure yeah. sure yeah. absolutely absolutely i don't know if you've noticed but when you give me a task i'd go yeah let's do that and let's <laughs> go to the left <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you noticed but my brain that's what yeah it's right <laughs> <laughs> so um so you went from from drama teaching to counseling you, you needed extra creativity you at that time you got involved invite invited to the veranda yes and then yes. from there you kept exploring different different yes. uh expressions so i'd love to ask you this so 
I haven't played around with, with watercolour. I have played with acrylic and I love oil painting. I love how the minerals, I love how it's just mm. so kind of, I don't know, organic. Yes. With you, with your process, how did you come, is it correct you've ended up with, with yes, oil? Yes, certainly. Oils, Why yes. oils? Um, I, look, I, I find that oils give you time to, um, to experiment time to play around with brush strokes, time to play around with blending. Um, so they offer more for me. I get frustrated with, I mean, I do occasionally do some work with acrylic, but I get frustrated with the fact it dries straight away, more or less, particularly in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the climate, it, it dries out very quickly. Um, and um, so uh, if you alter anything, it, it becomes thick and, um, you know, the layers become thick, if you like, whereas with oil paint it's far more refined, you know, nice thin layers. And and actually I'm sure somebody listening to this who d- works in acrylic says, oh, look, you can do a lot better with acrylics than you're implying, and I probably could if I pursued that. But, um, no, I, I, I like oil. I, I, I even like the smell of it. You don't, you're talking about it's organic <laughs> stuff. I like the smell of it. Oh, you can actually mm. tell where it's from. Mm. It's yes. from the ground. Yes, uh, yes. I, I yes. like that. It's not a plastic. Yes, it comes from right. the ground. Some of it's highly toxic. But, you mm. know. <laughs> I, I try to avoid those ones. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to label them. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. and I love how some are opaque and some are not. I love how it has all of these different yes. elements and that's just another learning curve all, all, all together. Yes, it is. It's, it's interesting that is, I think when you're beginning with oil paint, well, certainly for me, I, I've said I'm an experimenter and, of course, that extends to, oh, I'll try a new colour and I'll try a new brush and I'll try a new this, particularly new colours because there are a myriad of colours and different makes and so on Uh, but now I actually have refined my colours to sort of about six (laughs) and and I stay with that. And do you remember when COVID happened you said to me oh my gosh what if there's a restriction? Yes, in paint? That's right. yes exactly. <laughs> and it was white. Exactly. I need white. Yes. I don't know if you, if yes, you remember yes, saying that. I do remember that. And, and I, I had difficulty getting white. Yes. <laughs> in fact, during COVID, I was so panicky about, you know, materials. I started painting miniatures. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> because I thought, oh, well, at least I'd, I'm not using lots of materials. <laughs> yeah. Practical. That's practical. Okay, now let's flick over to the process of painting. How do you decide what you're going to paint? Right. Well, there are there are quite a few ways of doing it, but let me say you know they're and they're they're all great. Um, so it, you experiment with doing various things at various times. So you know I would get my stimulus material around me. Uh, that might be photos. It might be a, a book with you know um, some work of another artist, something like that. I've just bought a painting from you. Ah, yes, there you go. Yes, yes, and I'm dying to hang it up. <laughs> and there's stimulus, clearly. You told yes. me you were driving. Yes, yes. And you were... That gets into what's the what the inspiration is. Oh, sorry, jump forward. Yes, jump forward. It, it, inspiration's a little bit different from the process, but I'll come to inspiration. Separate them, I don't yeah. understand. Well, the process is, you know, what you do when you do it. Um, so stage one of this of this painting... Uh, stage two of the painting, stage three of the painting, and so on. Inspiration is what makes you do it in the first place. Okay, okay. Which which in there is okay? That's the image that I want to paint. Yes. So that's inspiration. Let's right. start. We'll start there. Okay. Start great. start with inspiration. So flip it around. <laughs> yes. Why not? Um, because with inspir- inspiration, all of the things that might inspire you are to re- are pleasurable. They all can excite you. So I'll give you an example. Um, Last week, my husband and I decided to go on a picnic uh, to a a local beauty spot last week, um, Goomba Valley, which is lovely. Mm. Um, And I took lots of photographs and came home. And I've got three pictures of Goomba Valley already because it was the place that inspired me. Yeah. I liked the look of all the uh, paddocks with their crops in, uh, the make creating patterns, um, that looked good. I liked the little 
um, you know, the houses, oh, there were lovely mountains and, and, and houses that seemed to be surrounded by trees. and So, so lots of things that appeal. Can Interestingly, I, can I just animals. say, Can I just say, listeners, that your hands are currently, cre- as you were speaking, you are literally creating this <laughs> yes. clay model with your yes. hand. Yes, I do. And you Shop were, my you, yes. you know, but you were shaping them oh. as you were. Like oh. I could see how oh. your mind was working. Oh. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that's one of the ways you get inspired by, you know, going places or seeing something, seeing a vase of flowers, seeing someone's face. It does, you know, it doesn't have to be a landscape. It can be actually seeing something and thinking, oh, I'd love to paint that. I'd love to paint, capture how the light, you know, re- reacts on mm-hmm. there or the, the, you know, that interesting shadow. I, I, I'd love to paint that. So it can be something you see. Mm. But it can also be um, as a result of um, going to a gallery and seeing some work that somebody else has done. Being inspired by them. Yes, yes. Mm. So, you know, uh, uh, for example, Van Gogh. um, I I love Van Gogh's work and and was recently doing some research uh, on Van Gogh and decided I'm going to try and imitate. So that was a, a, a definite decision to imitate uh, the the pine trees and the the um, so that's, skies that's and the so process, on. yes. Yeah, that gets onto the process, yeah. yes. But th- but uh, another artist is what I'm saying. Right. Another artist can inspire you uh, and make you yeah want to want to do that. So a gallery or um, exhibitions or just looking at something. Can can, can I say I'm incredibly emotion based. Yeah. So when I decide to paint something, I have to care a lot about the emotional reaction to that image. Yeah. It doesn't. It's not just beautiful. It has to sing something. Oh yes. Yeah, that's yes. my that's my thing, and it's, that's highly personal. Yes. Yeah. And and in fact, that's certainly so. You now we're into process. That would be something that you need to have in your mind when you are going through the process of getting your image on the canvas and choosing your colours and so on, is what is it that first made me want to paint that? Mm. What was it that made me made it sing? What's what's the hero of that piece? Yeah. Is it that particular flower in front of the others? Is it um, that expression on that person's face? Is it the way, you know, the the sun is, is hidden behind the cloud and we've got rays coming from behind the cloud? What is it that made me want to do it in the first place? Mm. And, and make sure that you privilege that. What's the champion? Throughout the painting. Mm. Yes, what's the champion? What's mm. the Understand. hero? Mm. Mm. So the other, the other thing that can inspire uh, and that I love to do is paint outside. So plein air painting. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, uh, I went with a painting buddy to a local, another local beauty spot, a different local beauty spot, and we set up our easels, more or less in the creek, actually. Did you have a wine? No. Oh, come no, on. No, this is This is in the morning. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, and uh, we took a picnic. We took a picnic. We yeah. took lunch. And uh, um, we, yeah, set up our easels and, and painted. Yeah. And whilst the painting I painted outside is not very good, um, I come home with, uh, you know, using that as a, a stimulus, if you like, mm. for my next painting. And taking photos? Yes, yes, taking photos at the same time. In fact, it's useful to take photos when you're painting outside because the light changes so quickly. Mm. So, you you know, you wait till the light is what you're going to paint. Monet talked photo. about that a lot. Yes. Monet yes. says, oh, my gosh, and the light changed. Oh, light changed. Change. Oh, it yes. changed. I have to come back tomorrow. Oh, no, it's <laughs> overcast. Oh, oh. <laughs> he well, agonised. That's right. Well, the, he, his, actually, his paintings of the haystack, you yeah. might remember that mm. he's got something like 27 paintings of the haystack. <laughs> There's a reason. That's right. Because he was he, tortured. <laughs> he painted it. He didn't have cameras. Yes. <laughs> different light conditions, different seasons, and so on. You, yeah. Did you? Did I ever tell you that we went to Atriot in Normandy, in France, to oh, see no. the beach side that he painted? Oh, no, no, no. Mm, yeah, yeah. And um, you know, it's it, it, it was beautiful. 
It was yes. gorgeous. I took a lot of photos. It was beautiful. It yes. was very inspiring yes. to, to be where he was. Yes, yes. I, yeah. found, I found his garden inspiring as well. We have not been to... Juvenet, yeah. Monet's it was garden, lovely. yeah. Mm. That's on the to-do, but that means going back to, to Paris and I'm... Not done. keen on that. <laughs> I've, done, I've done Paris. <laughs> so, so, okay. Um, you, uh, every time I see you, Mm-hmm. You say, so I'm experimenting with this. Yes. I'm experimenting with that. Yes. And and do you have a sense of having landed with what is your style, or are you just like um, incredibly, you know, um, I'm thinking of a child who just goes from one yes. toy to the next. It. I'm afraid it is about. It's the latter. <laughs> it's the latter. <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> yes. I. I sometimes. Um, reprimand myself that I don't do what a lot of artists do, which is find their play. You know, what they really like doing is painting flowers and they try and paint flowers better and better each time or um, paint in a particular style and they do it, you know, they, they focus on that and that is their thing. That's what they always do. Um, I'm just not that sort of person and I've... I, I have, from time to time I've tried to do that but it doesn't work for me you know what I think playful exploration mm. can only be a good thing yes well it, I have to live with it because that's the sort of person <laughs> yeah. I am can I can I get your permission that I mean I'm asking you on air you can say no <laughs> but after I post this do you mind if I post the painting that I'm currently buying from you oh not at all would that no. be all right you certainly can yes there is yes. this painting that I walked in you had this exhibition <laughs> I walked in I went that's mine Yes, <laughs> and that's the end of the conversation. Yes. Then I looked at the price tag. <laughs> 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 no, I have very good taste, clearly, but um, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. What would you do? So this is this is a painting where we've got kind of stormy o- stormy oceans. Clouds. Isn't that interesting? Clouds. I said oceans, yes. right? Oh, right. Yes, no. Stormy skies, and we've got a road which has a real kind of sense of movement and journey and destination, which I love. And then we've got this country countryside, which is very, very, um, you know, real, which mm. I really like. And um, But the level of intricacy in this painting is insane. Mm-hmm. What would you describe that type of painting, given that I'm about to post it after we post okay. this? Okay. People well, are going to be looking at it. I, I might... I, yeah, I... I'm not going to be pinned down to, to calling it a style. That's yeah. That's no drama. Um, I have used the paint to create the impression of detail. There is not a lot of detail in that painting, but the way in which I've used paint and brushwork uh, implies the detail. So that sort of marries it to impressionism, if you like. You know, that could could be called impressionism. But the sky was uh, influenced by my study uh, of J.M.W. Turner. So um, I loved the way Turner did skies and he used thick impasto paint mm. to create um, texture. texture in yeah. the sky. And so there's lots of texture in that sky. And he, you know, he, play, he loved, he sought out the sun all the time, light. And there's a lot of play where the light... Uh, what what happens on that road journey is the light in the distance you're going towards the light Mm -hmm. and that was the light um in Toowoomba actually and that road was leading to Toowoomba yeah well I love it I love it good okay so here's here's a big question when you're painting what do you get out of it I mean we're talking about the psychology of painting so obviously talking about the positive benefits for your mental health Mm -hmm. what do you get out of painting and if we were to flip it completely what would you miss out if you didn't have painting in your world i I, do you know i can't really to answer the last bit of that question i can't really imagine uh what i would do if i didn't have painting in my world Mm. hoping i can have painting in my world forever um in fact when i go on holiday uh, I take my paints with me if I'm going somewhere, you know, by the co- to the coast or something. If I'm going overseas, I can't do that. But um, just you know, buy some toxic paints over there. <laughs> I will certainly take a sketchbook and will yeah. 
draw people in cafes and you know uh, the departure lounge and all that sort of thing so I will uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do that instead of painting so you know I'll enjoy doing that um what do I personally get out of it it is diffi- difficult I'll go back to saying how much I love learning and how important that is for me with painting mm. Um, I, I am a bit of a butterfly. I do try different things. I experiment enormously. And when I feel as if I've uh, learnt that, that new, th- new technique that I set myself the task of learning, mm. I feel an enormous sense of satisfaction Absolutely. out of that. Yes, there's more to learn. There always is with art. More and more to learn. But that's part of what I get out of it, is the satisfaction of, of learning and feeling that I'm improving. Um, I like it. I like when I have a, a body of work and I put on an exhibition. I enjoy that. Interestingly, the selling is is almost incidental. It's strangely, it's not really important to me. It's it's nice to be able to uh, feed my habit, if you like. Mm. It's nice to be able to buy the paints, but the selling bit is not important. No, neither actually interestingly is oh I'm, I'm going to say it's not important what other people think about it and I suppose that might not entirely be true we always seek approval you know we, we try not to but we we do tend to seek approval but um, it, it I don't think it's as, as important to me as um, it is to many people that that idea that somebody else I love likes that. It. I love that because that's you doing it for you. It is very much me doing it for me. Well, I think Definitely. that's absolutely brilliant. That's yeah. a goal. Yeah. I don't actually like people looking at my art. Right. Yes. I'm very kind of private. Yes. Actually, that that's one of the nice things I, I mentioned to you that I have a painting buddy that we and we go and paint plein air together, and um, paint in one another's studios, and that's quite good. And I trust her and she trusts me mm. to say something about, you know, there's something missing in that corner or I'm not quite sure what you've done there or, um, you know, w- why not try a little bit of green or whatever it is. So we, we do uh, give one another feedback and it's, it's feedback Which that we trust. Which you would love because that's yes. continual learning. Yes, absolutely. That's mm. right, it is. It's about continual learning that. Well, you know, can I just wrap up by... But I often talk um, with people about state of flow. Yes. And state of flow, everybody, is when you find something which is expanding you, mm-hmm. which is meaningful. It's it's adequately challenging, so it's expanding you, but it's not too challenging to stress you, but it's not too easy to bore you. Yes. And when you're in that state of flow, time disappears, and while afterwards you'll, you'll report that that was lovely and pr- pleasant, in truth, it, there's actually not an emotion while you're in it. You just go down this rabbit hole. And for me, that's what painting is. That is a wonderful uh, description of probably what I feel, actually. There you go. That, yep. that state of flow where, yes, time doesn't matter. But it's interesting that you mentioned there isn't an emotion there, and there probably isn't. No. No, it's a strange um, thing. It's true. Mm. It's, a, it's a contentment. Yes, it's yes. a contentment and time disappears and so you can really, 1am, got to go to bed. Yeah. I deliberately don't let myself get up in the middle of the night and paint. Well, <laughs> I tend to start at night so it's dangerous I for see. me. Yes. It's when the yes. kids are down, Yes, you know. Yes. Well, darling, can I just say I absolutely love this topic. I love, we've never talked to, to this depth no, ever no, and I've no. really enjoyed finding out about your story and your process I really love it I love your passion I I mean you know painting is for you and and to a degree I mean I love writing and painting and mm-hmm. gardening and other things but I love painting as well um, and I guess the message is find your find the thing where you you can expand you can yes. learn you can disappear mm-hmm. and it tends to be a creative experience Yes, um, you know, pursuit or definitely learning. Yes, would you say? I think well, learning has been part of it for mm, me. That's for definitely. sure. Yes, and and yeah. so while we're talking about the psychology of painting, I really see it as a broader issue. Find your passion. Yes. Yeah. And if you don't have your passion, mm. it's pretty sad. Mm-hmm. 
It is. Um, I, I, I don't know how to advise. I think I almost found mine by accident, except... No, perhaps not. Perhaps I was going there anyway, if you know what I mean. I uh, yes. always knew mm. that I was had mm. an aptitude. And yes. I always knew I'd be playing with paints one day when I finally had a chance. Yes. And yes. I finally I'm here. <laughs> not as often as I would like. No. So we're going to catch up soon, right? Right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. okay. okay. Everyone, thank you so much, Catherine, for coming along. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I've enjoyed the conversation. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And now next time we catch up, we'll keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, everyone, if you want to catch me online, we've got KirstenHunterAuthor.com, Facebook, Instagram, and would you believe TikTok? We've got Kirsten Hunter Author and we've got Twitter, Kirsten Hunter AU. Thank you so much for coming along. Really enjoyed delving into this. Lovely. Thank you, Kirsten. See ya. Cheers.